we're on. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Something new for us to do. My name is Cindy Harrison. I am your host and artist of Paint With Heart, and I want to welcome you to this special preview of what it's like to be in a classroom. Hi, Ophelia, and hello, Melissa. Hi. This is my bestie, my co-host, Melissa Reyes. Hi, everybody. I'm Melissa Reyes, and we're really excited to be here today because we are streaming live on our Paint With Heart page and anywhere we've shared it on Facebook. And this is Paint With Heart. This is our regular classroom. I'm on the east, no, I'm on the west coast in Southern California, and Cindy's on the east coast in uh, Merrimack, New Hampshire. And today we are uh, talking about dream. This is my theme for the week. We've been talking about dream. Your dream is not forgotten. Keep dreaming. And there's this little guy on the shelf in my bookshelf who is also dreaming, and we're going to be painting a scene with starring that little guy. Tell us about it, Cindy. So if a spider could dream, what would he dream about? And one of my friends said, how about a lunar moth? And I said, perfect, let's do the lunar moth. So I created this up. And so yes, yeah, so my spider is dreaming big. He is low on his uh, reserve of lunar moth juices for the winter. So he needs to catch some lunar moss so he can fill his jar back up. And actually, my spidey's on my head right now. <laughs> uh, so we're going to paint this today. I'm going to show you some different techniques. There's the stenciling in the background. It's a multi-tone stenciling. There's a glass jar, cork, and the spider web, and give it some glitz. So let's get started. I started with a 12 by 12 canvas that is um, primed with a mixture of grape juice and purple cow. So it's a one-to-one -one mix of grape juice and purple cow. I kind of just applied one coat of it everywhere and it isn't very um, solid. There are places where you can see some of the canvas through it, but that's okay because what I want to do now is called a blended background. And I, for a, for a blended, black, bleh, blended background, I like to use an oval brush, whether it's, this is a cat's tongue, or you can have a shorter haired one called a moon filbert. Either one of these will work. Now I'm going to put a puddle of just grape juice out and a puddle of just purple cow, separate areas on my palette. So this was my mix I based with. Now I'm going to have a puddle of that. And they are not touching. Let's put out a puddle of Snow White too. I'm going to put this kind of up near the purple cow. Okay. So I'm going to pick up some purple cow and Snow White and I'm going to apply this in the upper left section with a big crisscross motion. And I'm going to wipe the brush off on my paper towel and then pick up purple cow, straight purple cow, and continue around that area, blending, overlapping the, the purple cow snow white mix with just straight purple cow. Then I move on to purple cow down here with a lot of um, grape juice would be the last thing. So pick up some snow white if you want to put that down first so you have an idea that's where my highlights gonna be I'm gonna go right into the purple cow and I'm going to go over that so I blend a lighter value purple and big crisscrosses work your way out now this is where I will wipe the brush off of my paper towel and just go into the purple cow and start 
and work my way towards that mix. If it gets dry, just pick up a little moisture. So I just work that purple cow and blend it into the first mix I put on here. Now, if you feel you this isn't light enough, white enough for you, you can, with your dirty brush, pick up a little bit of that Snow White, go back in and blend over it. And then as you walk it out towards the end, the white will dissipate. See how easy that was? Now I'm gonna go pick up a little bit more Purple Cow, bring this out a little bit further. Add a little moisture to my brush. Pick up the grape juice. Straight on my brush, start away from the pile of purple cow and work your way back and forth. I start away from it. I work my way into the purple cow, work my way back. So you can do big crosses, crisscross. You just don't want to go up too far into the purple cow area. If you feel like you've lost it, wipe your brush off on paper towel, pick up that purple cow, go back in and bring it down. Try not to go back up with this dirty brush. So we're making a glow here and we're just expanding that glow as it gets darker as you go towards the outside. If you have to go back up, wipe your brush off, pick up the lighter color, work it down. A little bit of moisture will help you to move that paint around your thing. Always pick up the lighter value first, work that around, and then you can go back in and pick up the darker color. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you. This is a 12 by 12 canvas gallery edge. Don't forget to go over the edges here too when you get out here with the purple uh, grape juice. If you want the directions on how to, um, to join us and get all the instructions ahead of time, just look at that event on the page for Paint With Heart. Yes. And you can also join our mailing list on the website, cindyharrisonart.com, and you'll get weekly notifications that will tell you the supplies needed, a line drawing, and basically I keep moving the paint as it is um, wet so it doesn't dry on me um, so that I can get that blended look blending that's the key is that wet Tom yeah add more paint add more of a um, little bit of moisture if your brush starts drying out as you're coming up the edge uh, you're gonna want to have more of the purple cow here up this edge and then go over it with the purple the grape juice after this helps the blending process. Now, if you um, use enough paint, you don't have to do the base coat I did first. You could go right to the um, blending, the crisscross, what I'm doing here. But if you don't use enough paint, definitely will need to. It, I think having a base coat down helps to make sure the canvas is all covered and you don't have any of those uh, canvas valleys showing. Well, Cindy, this is what I've got. That's beautiful. Really? Yes. Okay, good. 
It's beautiful. My um, my spot is so much in the corner, and I noticed yours is a little further down, and I thought, well, it's too late now. This don't is worry. I'm going with. Don't worry about it. If Please. just yeah, don't don't touch it. Just dry it now. But yeah, for for in the future, if 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 ever you feel like you know like you don't like this or like I've got some dark coming out into my medium, it doesn't matter. You could once you dry it, go back and reinforce start with the white and purple cow mix go to the purple cow make it long you know make it more purple cow you could also do a purple cow plus grape juice and put that in here and then put the grape juice i mean you can put layers and layers and layers on this but yours i wouldn't touch it I'd just leave it alone so the next step is to take your stencil get your stencil out okay. and a stencil brush i have a really big one here so get that ready. And the stencil I have is, it's like a damask kind of uh, pattern. And it's 12 by 12. And you can find them online. I Here's the stencil that I got. It's not exactly the same. But no. Yeah, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that on first. And then after you put that whole stencil on, then you're going to move it up or down, depending on if you have it here, you can move it up. You can move it this way. You see what I'm saying? And you're gonna use different corners of it so you're having repetition. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I am gonna dry my um, painting a little bit more with my blow dryer, so I'm gonna use this. Yep. I'm going to take a piece of, um, masking tape and I'm going to place it around my brush just to keep all the hairs together so this way here they won't spread out they're all together and I'm going to start by picking up a lighter color for the dark corners. And as I move in, I'm gonna pick up the darker color. So we're doing the opposite of what we just did. We started with the light in the middle and moved dark. Now we're gonna start and put the light on the outside and move in. Makes sense, I hope. So I swirl around the white and the purple cow mixture together, wipe off a little bit on my paper towel, and with a light touch, make sure you get your stencil on here where you want it. With a light touch, I'm gonna to start to swirl. I take off some more of that color. Swirl some of this around in the darker corners. If it doesn't show up, you need to not worry about that area. We're gonna go with a different value and it'll show up there. If you wanna see what you're doing, just lift it off, but always hold it down with one hand so you don't have to worry about realigning. How tight did you get those bristles in there? You go all the way to the edge or just before the edge? About a, about a half an inch up from the bottom. Okay, I think I went too, too close to the edge, you guys. And it doesn't, you don't have to get all of it. You just want to have some, some of the um, idea that there's stencil there.
Okay, yeah. I'm picking up grape juice now and I'm going into the darker areas. I didn't wash my brush up. I just picked it up on my dirty brush. And I'm going to start in the darker areas, and I mean in the light area, and work my way around. But be very gentle on the touch. We're truly, truly just tickling the surface of the canvas through the stencil. I'm not trying to apply a lot of pressure and add a lot of paint to my surface. I just want to tickle the surface. You lift up, hold it down on one side and lift it up on the other and see what you got. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh, yes. It's beautiful. If you it's like feel, wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> if you feel you lost some areas and you want to bring, you know, add more color. You can do that. But I'm thinking where you have dark going into light, you want to um, try and maybe pick up a little bit of the uh, purple cow and just soften. It's okay if you have what you call these um, lost edges. Meaning they're they're not very discernible, and it's okay if you have some of those. Okay, I'm about to lift up and see what I've got here with this first first go at it. Hey, not so bad. Got a lot of broken pieces of let's see paint brush. All right. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so mine, I started it on the side so I can repeat it. I think I'll turn it over the other way and go down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to go that. Awesome. And then I'll be done. So go hopefully I'll catch up with you. But yeah, look at that. I'm happy with that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Thanks, Cindy. I learned a new thing. Awesome. That's what, that's what Paint With Heart's all about, learning yes, new things. <laughs> so exciting. And, and let's see, Ophelia, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Oh, look at that. Ooh, wow. I that like is it. Melissa's oh. stencil. Oh my gosh, you used my stencil. It looks so good. I love it. And it looks like spider webs already. It does. I wish I had thought of that. It's really great. <laughs> I'm stunned. So I'm gonna wash my brush out and you should also wash your um, your stencil off. And if it doesn't come off with just, you know, gently with water, you can use um, the hand sanitizer. Now that that's done, I'm gonna measure off and I should have done this before, but that's okay because this is the way I did it the first time. Measure off a one and one and a quarter inches up from the bottom. And now I'm going to place a piece of tape across my piece above that one and a quarter inch mark. Make sure your paint is dry, obviously, before you do that. And then I'm going to take my burnt umber and my burlap. So I'm going to take my flat brush, but if you want to keep using your oval wash, you can. And I'm going to pick up, I put the two puddles next to each other so they're touching. So I go right in the middle of the puddle and pick up both at the same time. And I can start with um, the dark on top and just drag it up and down across my bottom of my piece. And I'm just slapping this paint on. I just want to make sure that I cover the purple. But yeah, my, my mission here is to get everybody 
uh, interested in picking up a paintbrush or being creative or just having a positive, fun, happy day. Melissa's affirmation cards and um, booklet also give you that. You pick a card of the day or a card of the week and you just met, is meditate on that. Does that sound right? Yep, that sounds right. That sounds right. And you'll be surprised that if you do that every day for a couple weeks, a month, whatever, it, it changes your whole outlook on life for the better. I think. I think it sure does. I, and you know what? Like, this week has been so nice. Every day we've talked about dream in different ways. Last night on um, last night's show, we had a bunch of ladies from all different types of businesses and fields, and we all talked about our dreams. And then um, earlier in the week, um, you know, on um, Anchor, I talked about dream being the top of mind, keeping your dream from your heart into the top of your mind and making it an everyday practice. And so it just come up again and again. It's been really neat. And tomorrow we start a new week with a theme and I don't even want to think about it because this week has been so cool. I'm like, okay, but tomorrow there'll be something different. It'll be nice. All right. Okay. Anyways, so I'm going to blow dry this. So that's one and a, one and a quarter inches up from the bottom. You can do this before you do all the other stuff if you want to, but it's just as easy to do it this way. I'm going to take my tape off. Be careful when you take the tape off. There we go. I'm going to take my line drawing out of my box. And I'm going to place it on my piece. Now, if when you're doing bottles and such that you want it symmetry, you know, the bottle is symmetrical, right? It's the same on the left as on the right. What you want to do is take your bottle and you want to, uh, tracing paper, and you want to fold it in half. Like so. And if when you look through it, if you only drew half of it or not, you can erase the line and make sure that the other half is the same as the, the right half is the same as the left half. And that's how you'll make sure that your curvatures and everything are equal. It's called proofing your pattern. So I find it very um, good to do that when I have such things like bottles, bottles and bows, bowls, B-O-W-L-S, bowls. Okay, I'm going to put my bottle down and I want it to be a little bit over this edge, maybe by a half inch. If you want to square this off with your canvas so it's not leaning one way or the other, you can put a T-square down as it fits on the edge. And then you can see if your edge here is somewhat straight. Or if you have that center line, you can straighten that center line with your ruler. Okay? That's another way of making sure that none of your, do that with buildings as well. So when you're doing houses and buildings and stuff, you want it straight. Pick one of the straight edges. Not every edge is going to be straight. So I'm going to put that down. I'm going to take some white graphite. If you tape your pattern down, make sure your paint's dry where you're taping it down. I'm going to hold it down with one hand, lift off. and put that underneath, straighten that out. Take your stylus, which is a um, little knobby thing, has a round knob on it. 
and I'm going to start to draw right over this. If you want to use a pencil, you can use a pencil. Make sure you can see your line drawing so you don't do the whole thing and realize the color doesn't show up. I'm putting in the cork and then put your bottle on. You don't want to press too hard because you're going to go right through the paper on this canvas. Make sure you can see it. Yep, looks good. If you're ready for the next step, We're going to paint the cork with burlap and we're going to um, do that first. Use, let's see, let's see, you can use a number 12 flat or you can use something smaller for the bottom part. So with the burlap, I'm just going to go in. If you want to put, some people put tape on the edges, but I just go right to town. When I put my paintbrush down, I put it inside that line that I created with the graphite, and then I work toward that line. I don't start on the edge to begin with. So I ease my brush towards that graphite line. I'm always afraid to start adding the paint on the background. I took so much time to paint. <laughs> And then we just cover it up, right? I know. I'm just starting to like how it looks. That's why I tell people not to get too hung up on the background because we do cover it right back up and no one's going to notice all the painstaking effort you did. And I'm going to take a picture of mine first. <laughs> you go right ahead. <laughs> It might be the best thing that I do all day. That's not true. Okay. If you don't have a stencil or you're not comfortable stenciling and you want to just keep that back blended background as your background, it would be perfectly acceptable. So it, it really, you know, I, I give options that way. So whatever you're happy with, stop, you know, mm -hmm. keep it if that's what you want to do. But obviously, Melissa, you can't keep just your back. I mean, you could, but you have to paint mm -hmm. another one to get the web, you know. <laughs> so, I'm, no, I'm ready. I, I want to draw that little bottle, and I'm going to do the, the, the shelf at the bottom. Um, right. And I'm, you know, I've got all the paint here, and I'm going to do it. I'm just, uh, I'm excited. But I, you know, I like doing this. So, so. it's so fun. So I'm going to blow dry this and put a second coat. Okay, on the cork. I'm going to use my number three round and I'm going to pick up some burnt umber and I'm just going to make some crazy dots and loopy thingies. So you start less water, more paint. And you can draw little lines, you can draw big fat things, whatever, in any shape you want. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. See how that, that can just go. Just, even if you just do little dots, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Some can be darker, some can be lighter. They can be thick, they can be thin. Don't forget down here can be on the edge, kind of everywhere. So, real technical. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna do a little shading on our cork before we do the bottle. So I'm gonna um, put out a fresh puddle of my burnt umber. I'm going to use, my three quarter inch flat, the three quarter inch flat. And this is where, let me show you. So I'm going to pick up, take your wet brush and you wash over just so that it's damp 
but not dripping wet. And on the corner, I'm gonna pick up some of the burnt umber. If you can see that, just on one corner, tap it down a little bit, and then come over to my edge and just draw that color right down. Now, if you have taken over and you can't see any of your squiggle lines, wash your brush out with a clean, wet, damp brush and just go over that and it will lighten it up. Wipe off the excess on your paper towel. Do the same on the other side, only uh, be careful because when you get down here, your paintbrush is going to be too wide and it will, um, you want to wipe off the excess that goes over. Just use your clean brush. You don't want to wipe off what you just put on. So I'm going to come over here. I need to turn this around so I can see it. And pull up on that from edge to edge. And I'm going to tip on this one so that I don't wipe off the other side. I would probably dry it with a blow dryer before I hit it. So maybe let's just lighten that up a little bit. Any excess you don't want on there, go back in with the clean brush and just wipe it right off. Dry that. Okay, I'm going to go to a smaller flat. And I'm going to, again, if as long as you dried it, you can wet across that area, pick up on the corner of my brush, and I'm going to go right across above the bottle and below the bottle on the cork. I'm on the cork, but the paint is on, the paint's against that bottle line. If you wanna mop it out, you can take your handy dandy little mop brush. And it's a soft mop and you can just mop that out, soften that makeup line. Now with the, that liner brush of the three round, the three, I'm going to pick up some of that burlap and I'm going to draw this line across the top, kind of touching down. And if it doesn't show up, pick up some Snow White and it's broken up. It's not a straight it's not a straight line, it is broken up, but it's going across the top. And then I'm going to take a dome round if you want. You can also use a flat brush and do a, a float color if you know what that is and you can do that. But I'm gonna take this light buttermilk this for that high. lighter value. And I'm going to, I swirl it around on my palette like I did for stenciling. And I'm going to just tickle the center area a little bit to the right of center to give my cork a highlight. So just like we did for stenciling, you pick this up, wipe it off on a dry piece of paper towel and just tickle that surface and it gives it a highlight. There's no highlight down here because it's in the bottle. And I'm gonna wash my brush out. And I have a finer liner brush, 10 aught, and I can go over that and squiggle a little bit of highlight up there. Okay. I'll show it to you close up. So detailed. That's so much detail in that tiny little cork. Cool, huh? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to do the rest of the bottle. Ready? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So the whole bottle itself, I'm going to take my uh, three quarter inch flat again. And this time I'm going to pick up for real white paint. And it has um, water in the brush. Not that you can see it. Maybe you can see it if I do this. See how it, it, it has that water moisture so it's coming together? So you want that water, a lot of water. And I'm going to take my brush now and on a piece of paper towel, do this until it gets absorbed. Then come over to my piece, starting right under the top part of the cork, round it to the left, round it to the right where your lines are. If I need more, come over here, let it absorb the water, go back. All I did was add a little bit more pigment. Now I'm going to go right over my cork and I'm going to go right down the side, bring it down, go right down the other side, and try to keep the same, keep it moist, and keep bringing it down. And you're going to bring it down on the whole bottle, equally keeping it all wet. If you need more moisture, pick up some more moisture, go back up, bring it down. Wow. You want to see your background through this. You do not want it to be solid white. So you want to keep that moisture moving across your piece. So I just keep going back to the beginning and walking it across. All the way down to the bottom. And the good thing is, is we're going to put a label on it, so you won't see the middle piece so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn my piece around because I can't, I need to see where I'm going. And I find it easier to do this. Thank you, Tracy. That the corks look great. Yeah, she really likes the cork. It does look great. Now this might be a little too bright of white, so I might just have to move. Get some of that moisture out of my brush. Whoops. Oh shoot. No shooting. I just got a little splash of paint on my keyboard as I I uncovered it. I have a cover for my keyboard, so I don't. I un I uncovered it when I typed all that stuff in, and I didn't recover it before I started painting. Ah. I usually do, but you know it adds to the, you know. Use a Q-tip. Q my keyboard now matches my desk, which is covered with splatters of paint. <laughs> So if it's over oh. on the edge and you don't like it there, take a clean brush and just reshape that edge. And you know, as much as you try to make it symmetrical, it doesn't always work out. But again, that's the, that, I think that's the, the um, appeal, the charm of having something hand painted. I'm going to um, blow dry that. And while that is drying, you guys are doing that, I'm going to take my spiderweb line drawing. Now, not that you need one, but if you have it, sometimes it makes it easier. And I'm going to take my black graphite. Now, depending on where you placed your jar is going to depend on your where you put your spider web because I want 
And I suppose I should have done that first with the, put the spiderweb down and place the jar according to the spiderweb, but I want the tip of the spiderweb to touch the top of the cork and two sections of two areas of the bottle. So that's where I'm placing my spiderweb. I want to make sure that this is completely dry before we do more detail work to it. Not detail, but it is sort of. If it's completely dry, I'm going to pre-wet my bottle. And pick up the white on the corner of my brush again. And if you want to tap it on your surf on your palette, you can, but I'm going to <coughs> In and put a little bit there and put some down the edge here. You can go up, you can go down, but you want it on the outside edge. And it's going to be a little more solid on the outside edge because it's thicker in the angle of the glass. So you're not necessarily going to see the wallpaper on the back. While that's drying, I'm going to take some lamp black and I'm going to paint a little bit of my spider web. Because if I want to try and keep this to a two hour program, <laughs> which is what I try to do. Oh my God. But, but today's a little different because we're doing this special live on Facebook as well. So I'm not, um, it's going to take a little longer because I talk to you. <laughs> I'm drawing a line with my three round. of the spider web. Always fascinates me the the intricate work that a spider can do. So little. Totally. I don't want them in the house, but they are amazing. Start back where you began. I'm putting the color on. I do have replays on Facebook, I mean, on um, YouTube and my website, and I cut out a lot of this or fast forward through a lot. So if you don't want to join the classroom and paint with us, and this is kind of boring to watch me do this, you can go there and I will have cut out most of this stuff. Yeah, but she leaves all the funny things I say and do in it. Yeah, well, if you make a funny face, I have to leave it. Or she puts it at the end. Bloopers. <laughs> Finished my cork and my little table. I'm going to attempt to do the bottle now. Okay. So it's a lot of water. It's some white. A lot mm -hmm. of water and some snow white. So let's see. If I start up here, I start a little 
make sure you're going in the same direction. It goes in towards the high, the center of each of these pieces go in. It's not on the outside, it's on the inside. And again, that's why I say you don't need to um, draw this on with the graphite paper uh, because you're gonna have to end up probably erasing those lines anyways. So if you just give yourself the bones, you know, these bones, then you can fill in the rest. So that's pretty much it for the whole base foundation of that. Um, right away. Let's go over here, back to our bottle. Now I'm going to do the same on this side. Moisture on the bottle. If you keep the moisture on the bottle, it won't bleed out beyond the bottle like we did on the cork. Some more Snow White. I'm going to turn my piece around. Let's dry that now. I'm going to take my round brush and some white and I'm going to draw a line across the top of my bottle and I'm going to draw another one over here. You can kind of fill in with the excess. We're going to make that more white because it's thicker glass so we'll cover that. Take out some green tree and we're going to pick um, a point. The bottle I did, the amount of liquid in it from the bottom is about three inches up. So if you wanted to mark the three inch mark area Oops. on both sides. What we can do is go ahead and base coat in this green tree leave a little bit of the white edge showing around it. So I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch of white showing around it. Blow dry that. So, want to see my bottle? Sure. The table came out a little messed up. Whenever I use that tape, it never completely makes it. Oh, cool. And then, of course, no matter how hard I try, I couldn't get it completely even, but we'll fix it. That's okay. So, but I, I'm really happy with that. That was fun. I've never considered doing that, making something transparent like that. And it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta put some juices you go. in your bottle. Okay, so that's just adding the, what was it, thermal green? Nope, it's oh. a green tree. Green tree, really? Okay, cool. I've got that. You do. <laughs> deco art. Thanks to deco art, right? Yes. And this is what's great about this is that um, we share with each other and we show each other and we learn from each other. So that's what's great about Paint with Heart and being a part of Paint with Heart. So we always welcome new family members to the Paint with Heart family. Um, we're going to take some plantation pine and just give a little hint of some um, depth to our juices. And I do that by taking my flat brush and it's got water in it, but I put um, some green on the corner of my brush. You could probably do it with a round brush or a liner brush. I'm going to tap that off a little bit. I'm just going to kind of just slide it 
back and forth on my over my green tree. This part here is going to be covered up by a label. So really it's the outer edges that you're going to see more than anything. If you want to tuck some in on a cor on the corners, on the edges, you can do that. I have a fair amount of water in my brush. So you can either do it with that or you can pre-wet. Let's go ahead and tuck some of that in above. What is that a different color? That's plantation pine. Wow. Gonna dry that. Here's a line drawing and I put a line here. So you're doing the plantation pine above that inner line. Okay. Because then I'm going to go back in with the white and I'm going to make that brighter white. And if you go over the, you can just wipe it off with a clean part of your brush and reshape that. You can also do it with a round. So I'm making that more white. I'm going to go back with my three quarter inch and come down again over top of that green. <laughs> I'm really loving how gross it looks. <laughs> it is the season. I love it. Okay. So. When that is dry, we're going to take our tracing paper and we're going to put our label on. Now I'm going to base coat my label in with light buttermilk, which is a uh, I use all DecoArt Americana paints. This time when you base this in, you do want a solid, a solid coverage. You don't want to see the background through it. I don't want to cover as much as mine as you have covered. <laughs> well, don't then. I'm not. Like, here's a smaller label. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yours is so, you're, yours is probably based on something though, right? Like a real bottle. <laughs> probably, yeah. I should just trust you. It's okay. Again, that's why I say you, you do make it your own. You do what you want. If you want to just put a little eensy beensy label on it, then. And yes, being in the classroom, if you're a painter and you know, being in a classroom, right, we're, we're always waiting for listen to what the teacher says and then we go back to our place and wherever we paint what the teacher told us to paint so it takes time yes mm -hmm. you can't rush these things it doesn't look good if you rush them i'm doing a second coat when it dries okay so now that's dry i'm going to put a second coat and this time i'll go with a bigger brush and it'll take less time now we have to make this label look rounded like we did our bottle. And the way we're going to do that is to take our brush, our flat brush, 
Now we're going to wet the label. Make sure it's dry first. Wet that label I'm on the left side. Load my brush in the corner with um, burnt umber. Tap some of it off. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna round that corner. And it's a little bit dark right now. We go back over it and pull some of that off. Bring it down. Now we're gonna go right into that square, but then with the water end of your brush, wash off that little area there that goes up. Bring it down. So we're gonna do the same on the other side. Clean your brush out, take some water. Go down the other side. I'm staying on the label. Go right down. I like turning my piece around. Pick up on the corner of the brush, tap a little bit off. This time here, you're gonna bring it up a little bit and then you're gonna tip it into that little crevice there. And then just keep swiping it up until it fades away. Come in and then do this roundy thing here. So if you want to go back on this side, make it a little darker, round that out. Then we can mop it. If you need to, soften that makeup line and then blow dry it. Now I'm gonna do the details. So if you need to trace those details back on with graphite, you would go ahead and do that at this time. I'm going to take my three round and some of that burnt umber and start to create my outline. So figure out where the center, I'm gonna go, first I know this, and then this is going to come, the straight lines we know, right? Outlining, we know. Straight lines are easy, they're definable. When you come to this area, if you want to trace your moth on, if you want to put a moth on it, you want to trace that on so you know how high you can go. You don't have to put the moth. You can put a line drawing of any kind on here. You can just put words, moon or moth. I'm going to bring this around and I'm going to follow it in a swirl. Just like that. I'm going to do it on the other side. Start up there, follow that line down, bring it around, and then swirl it in. So if you've got a little thin, you wanna make it a little thicker, just go back over it. A little moisture in your brush, make it a little inky and then you can continue on. What you wanna not do is anchor this. You need your range of motion. If you put this down, then you can only go here. But if you lift it up, you can go everywhere. So that's a hint I would give you when doing line work. Do not anchor your heel of your hand.
So my original swirls were bigger than my little, my ones I just put on here, but you know what? Again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be identical to my line drawing. Put that V. Swapping around, down, up. Okay, now I can finish that. And you can create a narrow line by flattening your round brush so you have this very narrow line here. If you want to add a little detail, I can do stroke that way, stroke that way, stroke that way. Yeah, I'll give you a little detail. But it's not necessary if you don't want to. So again, this is another point where at this point, if you wanted to just put Luna Moth or I don't know, spider legs, frog legs, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> warts, I don't care. <laughs> you can put whatever you want there. And then we can highlight it and shade it. You want to see what I got so far? Sure. All right, then. Oh, neat. Look at that. Kind of a little. Bottle. It's a little uneven at the top. It's okay. It, <laughs> it is looks, so cool. It looks better when it's flat, but when I hold it up, it looks really uneven, but that's okay. But no, it's so it. it's neat and it's that's the time of the season. So I'm thinking it looks great. I love the bottom. It looks like there's, you know, sediment. I know. <laughs> cool. Now that I did a nice, beautiful side loading and outlining over here, I want to make this the same color as the rest of it. So I'm going to go back with the light buttermilk and um, paint in Oops. the edges of the wings. So now that I've made it all the same color, I'm going to go back to my burlap and I'm going to take my um, round brush and I'm going to load it in the burlap. Kind of flatten it out, as you can tell. I kind of flattened it out. And I'm going to start and make these two little um, like an S stroke. How do I do that? Start on a chisel of my flat, flatten it out, and end on a chisel. So let me see if I can do that close up. Actually, if I do it over here, you can see it better. And I'll do it with a big brush. So you load your brush and you flatten it out. It's a liner, it's a round brush, but I flatten it out. I start on a chisel edge, flatten it down, and end back on a chisel edge. So that's what that looks like. Start on the chisel edge straight up, flatten it out, and end again straight up. So you can do it with a small flat, you can do it with a liner, or with a round. The width will depend on the pressure that you put down when you come in this angle. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. This time start at the bottom, put a lot of pressure, and then end on the chisel. Again. While that's drying, we're going to take some Snow White same brush, 
and I'm going to paint the top area of his wings and then a little bit here where his head is. Doing these eyes. No, I want you to paint. Well, I'm going to go right down this area here with white as well. Oh, I was right. It's like a, oh, it's a like, kind of frog with a tail. Frog amphibian. with a tail. Okay. A small, slender, and Bodied amphibian with lungs and a well developed tail. There you go. Legs and a tail. Let's wipe down here. Now, when you get to this bottom part of his wings, I'm going to mix a little bit of the country blue in. I'm also going to bring this country blue white mix down the side of the tail. A little bit of that plantation pine that you may still have out. Paint those little back sides of the, of the tail here. There are two little triangles at the bottom, or not triangles, but areas that are actually the fold over of the tail. And I'll show you that. Oh, look at that. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now that the little mustache up here is dry, I'm going to take my round brush with some watered down um, or umber in it. And I'm going to wash over the top part, top half of the mustache. See that? mustache. Yep, and we're going to take that fine liner that we used and we're going to pick up some burnt umber and then you're going to do little feather lines. Our next color is going to be Sunny Day. And I'm going back to my round and I'm going to put that Sunny Day right under that outline, his head area. Bring it down to where the two white areas meet, probably not that far into it. And then I'm going to start underneath where the, where the V is and bring that down about two thirds of the way. This color is also going to be over here on the tip of each wing. And along the bottom of those eyes. Have them underneath the head. Mm -hmm. 
So I left white area up here, so it's under the head down, below the V area, all the, down to the inner V, the tips of the wings, and the bottom of each eye. Now, if you put too much yellow and you want to put that back, I mean the white back, if you think you get too much yellow there. Okay. So now I'm going to go with straight country blue and I'm going to overpaint this white area. And when I come around, leave a little bit of that white line on the outside, and I'm going to come in and paint the top half of this eye with that color. And come back out. Again, leaving some white area up there showing. Coming down around. Come in and do top third of this eye and back out. Now I'm going to pick up some navy, and if you don't have fresh petal of grapefruit, uh, grape juice out, you should put a fresh petal of grape juice out. So I'm going to take my liner brush and some grape juice, mix it with the navy, and align the inside of this eye. So this right now is navy plus grape juice. And it's lining the bottom of the country blue outline, which is on top of the white. Now the bottom of the wing and down the sides, I'm going to do with grape juice. So I use the same liner, but I'm going to go in with straight grape juice. I just wanted to show you my, my label. Oh, look at you. Moth breath. <laughs> Moth broth. Moth broth. Moth broth. That's cool. <laughs> so yes. what we're going to do next is we're going to, um, you can base coat the rest of this in with the, um, the green tree. If you take the green tree and you kind of go in and fill in the areas that we didn't cover with the yellow or into the home the moth the part that we haven't painted with any other color that's all going to be done okay see this it's gonna yeah we'll just do that okay so he's done I switch to the round brush because it gives me a little bit more control than the flat did. So when it dries, put on two coats. Okay, we're going to take our liner brush here and we're going to pick up some of that green and make the eye. And if you lose that white, go back in and add it. 
my yellow is a little bit bigger than it needs to be. I'm going to put back in some white. Make that yellow smaller. Let's take some of that burnt umber. And we're going to take our flat brush. If you want to pre wet or just do a side load, we're going to put some of that color down here on the bottom. And then right where it turns down. Yeah, it's a little jagged edge. And let's see, next we're going to add some legs using our number one round. And I'm going to pick up some country blue. So have your country blue out and pick up some grape juice. So first the country blue, and I'm just going to wiggle that out from the head here. It's wide and it gets narrow. And here's another one over here that starts wide and gets narrow. You can either wiggle it or you can tap it out. Starts narrow and gets wider as it gets closer to the origin. I'm gonna wash my brush off, pick up some grape juice. We're not going to cover the blue completely. And we're going to tap it. I'm going to go against the, the wing and then down one side. I'm tapping it now against the wing and down kind of one side. Against the wing. And I'm doing the bottom side for the most part. And then when you got that, you're going to take a little bit of the navy and add that to the grape juice on your brush. So it's a brush mix to deepen that purple, that grape juice. And we'll add it a little bit near the, where it touches the wing. Okay, so now he's got legs. I left that white area around the wing. Now I'm going to go in and take some of that snow white and go back and I'm going to tap it so that this white line is not a solid white line. So it's fuzzy. So I'm tapping it up and down going a little bit over in both directions. So some goes beyond the over the light buttermilk um, label and some is going over the country blue mine work that we put on the Take the same liner brush and some burnt umber, and I'm going to put some lines on the, um, where we just did the shading. 
make sure it's dry first. Same brush now and some grape juice. We're going to outline the eye, so the yellow part. And then we're going to go between the yellow and the white. Do that on the other side. Between the yellow and the white. And if it didn't, if you again mess up, just take more of one of the colors. And put that back in. And it'll all be fine. Now we're going to take some of the green tree. And I'm going to add a little bit of that to the center of this yellow area. And you can kind of tap that so it's light. And it's already down there, so bring that down, bring it up here a little bit. Now, if you need to put on the detail lines for down here, you should do that. I'm going to put some Snow White and Country Blue, tapping it on the top his head. Maybe a little more snow white. Okay. Okay. Now, down here, I want to take some sunny day. And I'm going to outline these areas. So little bees at the bottom. And this little curve issue here. Now we're going to take some plantation pine. And our flat brush. And like we did on the bottom, like we did on the bottom, we have some um, plantation pine shading. We're going to go with some plantation pine on his wings. So let's add that to the Walk it out and I'm kind of dabbing it. Wipe it off his eye. I'm going to add it over it on the other side from below this eye. And if you need a little moisture, if you need to pre wet. I kind of want it thicker on the outer side, the part that's the thickness of the shading on the label. So 
So if you need to bring this out a little bit more. You can have it wider on the left side than on the right. I'm also going to add this a little bit of the shading. In this corner here underneath the wing. And again, a little bit of that over here. Down that side. And this one, I'll mop out. So now I'm going to take some of that plantation pine and I'm going to line this inner peak and we're going to bring this line up from there up alongside and then line below the yellow that you put there and bring that one up a little bit here Take some sunny day and I'm going to make lines on the wings. So this one kind of comes straight down. The next one comes from the head and curls toward the eye. And then comes over. From that, we're going to have a line at the eye, a line in the middle. And then two lines over here. Let's go on the other side. A line here. The next line is going to Go down to the eye, come out on the other side, and have a line down. Up here, line over there. You can also put a line down from here. Okay, now we're going to dry that. Oh, we need some lines on his body too, in the tail part. So, um, whoops. There's a line here. And a line here. Here. Okay, now we're good. Let's blow dry that. And now I'm going to cover the whole thing, all the moth, the green parts of the moth, and the green juices in the bottle with thermal green. And that will really make it pop. And don't forget to do the green eyes as well. Go over and put that on here as well. Let's go over all the green parts, you know, don't go over the yellow here or 
um, the white here, but you can go over the yellow down there. Right, say that again. So do not go over the yellow here. Right. Or the white. Okay. You can go over all of this area, but not the eyes. Dot the eyes with the thermal. Okay. Go over all of this yellow down here, yellow and green. All right. <laughs> it just looks like a nose. <laughs> You're gonna stream now. Just yeah, stop moving. Oh, hold on. So cool. I like it. You like it? Yeah. He's cute. Okay, so now we gotta highlight the bottle. We're done with the moth, and we gotta work on the bottle. And now what I'm gonna do is, you know that that dome brush, the red handle brush that we have. This one. Okay. I'm gonna pick up some white, whirl it around on a dry piece of paper towel, and go across the neck here, or whatever, the rim mm -hmm. of the bottle up there. And then we're gonna take some of that and we're going to pretend right here and very lightly add some scratches but stop at the label and it's a little bit wider down here and narrower up there can you tell yeah However, when we go to the opposite side, on this side, we're going to get bolder and we're going to bring it right down over our label and our moth. So we're going to need more paint. And it goes down a little bit beyond the uh, label down here. So obviously you're following the shape of your bottle, not the shape of my bottle. If you want to take your burnt umber, wash of burnt umber or whatever, and you can um, make it darker underneath the bottle if it's not dark enough for you already. I'm looking at the, those, whatever these things are, furry things. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt umber at the tip where it goes into the Head. Now, you did your spider web, right? Mm hmm. After your bottle's done, go ahead and finish your spider web like I started earlier. And then you're going to take this um, product called Glossy Accents. And there's also another one called. liquid glass, DecoArt has a liquid glass. And you can do either one. And they both have nice uh, narrow tips. And you'll make sure that it is open because it does dry up. Push a little bit out. And then what you're going to do is draw along what you painted in black. And I'm not doing the um, straight lines, I'm just doing the curved lines. So whatever curved lines I've done. And then you take your glitter and you 
sprinkle it over the glossy accents or liquid glass. Let that dry. Then you knock off the excess and you will have this when it's dry. So there you have it. Oh, you know what I didn't do? What I did on the original here is I did pre-wet that corner before I did the glossy accents. I pre-wet that corner and I put black up in the corner and over the edge and had it soften out so it faded away before it got to the white the light highlights of the of the first layer we did on the background the white plus purple cow so i just left it up up there in the corner to make that a little darker and i also drew a connector to the table on the web but other than that, that's everything in a nutshell. Want to show me yours, Melissa? Sure. There yeah. you go. I'm trying. Oh, Although I love I it, spider web. Thank you. And the cork and the bottle. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So um, I still have to put the glossy accents on, and I'm about to put the little wash in the corner. But I did get, um, you know. Yep, connect all the peaks to something there. The one on the bottom near the going towards the bottom of the bottle, it's very light. Yeah, okay. very light. But yes, if your paint seems to drag for you as you're doing those lines, just add a little bit of moisture to them and then they will cover easier. But everything on it looks really fantastic. Thank you. So, do you want to say your goodbyes? Uh -oh. All right. Well, thank you everybody for being here today. What a fun, um, what a fun project. This has been a dream and I can't wait to see what happens when the spider. Oh, oh that's right. I didn't oh, tell you about jumped that. away. Anyway, I can't wait to see what happens when the spider gets his moth broth. So yes, I forgot to say. The when the spider, when you are done painting, and you varnish it because you want to varnish it, protect it, and all the glossy accents are done. You can take your X-Acto knife, decide where your spidey is going to live, and take the X-Acto knife and cut a slit, and then take this clip and clip it into that hole. And That's can, smart. Isn't that cool? And he can live, yeah, he can live wherever you want him to live. So he can be in the web, he can be on a table. Ah! So yeah, wherever you want him to live, he can live there. Isn't that well, cool? Yes, he is, it's such a clever little project. I love, I love making the spider web and I can't wait to put those glossy accents on and this the glitter but i had fun making the first time i ever made a bottle tra something translucent like that it was a lot of fun and the glowy neon paint really added a little punch there so clever thank you so much cindy thank you melissa and thank you everyone who has joined us i got my hat on um joined us for today's episode of paint with heart and so until next week, remember to always paint with, with heart. heart. Good night and thank you.